All right, hello, Honors 410. Um, if all goes as planned, um, this will likely be the last video lecture I'm gonna record for you all for a couple weeks here. Um, we're doing the workshop, um, unless kind of immediate updates come in or something uh, of enough depth, I feel like I need to do a, a video lecture to explain what's going on. Um, we're gonna be focusing kind of just purely on discussing the student work uh, in the discussion thread. So um, you will be seeing videos from me during that period. Uh, I'm sure for many of you, that'll be a welcome reprieve, um, but, but nonetheless, um, please keep in mind that we will still be having the class discussions, um, and keep in mind that your, your expectations for participation, if anything, are actually higher at this point in the semester, um, because the expectation is that you're commenting on every single workshop draft that students turn in. Um, so um, you know, make sure you're reading all of, all of your peers' work. Again, I'll be posting it, and that's kind of your homework for next time is to, to be reading the, that work. I recommend you download a copy for yourself just to have it easily accessible to comment on when the new discussion thread goes live. But otherwise, it always will be there in, in the preceding discussion thread if you want to you know, jump back to it for um, you know, checking it out and to, to consult with the original work. Um, but so for today's class, I wanted to kind of set up our talking about um, workshop and, and work, workshop drafts as well as the actual workshop discussion process. Um, so in the drafts, um, I know this is a little bit late because we have our first two already in, but uh, I appreciate, you know, Brendan and Aporva, you know, being willing to, to go on the, on the early end of this. Um, but but yeah, I want to make mention of this for the majority of the class that, that is still coming up. Um, and so first off, I just want to mention um, a couple general guidelines to think about with writing the stuff. We talked about a little bit during the, the discussion of the flash pieces um, and a little bit just kind of tangentially as we're going through the course readings. Um, one thing I want to mention, um, and this goes more towards creative work, so assuming that most of you are probably doing either short stories or um, creative nonfiction projects where you're telling a true story, um, this applies less to, um, excuse me, less to critical essays if you choose that route. Um, but focusing on scene, um, there can be a temptation often to, to get a lot of exposition in or just kind of, you know, summarizing quick plot points, um, getting out of characters' heads, putting them in action with each other. A lot of times that, that's where a story really starts. Um, that's where you can show rather than telling. You can kind of give us a sense of, you know, who characters are based on the way they behave or, or the things that they say, um, as opposed to, you know, you know, just sort of being, um, you know, more just kind of, you know, just giving us the story and giving us what we're supposed to think about it. Um, making dialogue count. Um, I think uh, a lot of times students fall into a trap of including a lot of dialogue, a lot of back and forth, in large part just because it kills page space, right? Because um, if you just have a student, or if you have a character saying, you know, one thing, then another thing, and the relatively short things they're saying, all of a sudden you can fill up full pages with, with dialogue. Um, and, and if it's a, a key part of your story, that doesn't mean you can't do that. Um, but don't think of it as filler. And, and look for instances where, um, you know, paraphrasing or where just kind of rendering what's going on as opposed to, you know, verbatim catching dialogue um, can be a good tool for you. I think one of the misconceptions um, that especially student writers tend to have is that dialogue should sound exactly the way that people speak. Um, it's not to say that's completely wrong-headed, um, because I think if, if it sounds totally unrealistic, that can take us out of the story. Um, that can necessarily not be as effective. But the problem with that way of looking at dialogue can be a lot of times we, the way we speak, you know, we, we stutter, we say things with, with a lot of ums and likes and kind of, you know, filler words in there. Um, we, we speak in cliches a lot uh, where, where we, you know, reference, you know, kind of truisms or, you know, old sayings um, in ways that don't necessarily help a story or a piece of creative writing, right? So looking for kind of, you know, efficiencies around that, um, things that will show character over necessarily rendering complete realism in those cases. And I expect we'll, we'll hash that a little bit more, you know, in the actual workshop. Just want to plant that seed as something to think about here. Um, trying to end it. Um, so, so, you know, especially for uh, the flash pieces in this class, I was really pleased that for the most part, we had pretty well contained pieces where it had a beginning, a middle and an end and it left off on a reasonably satisfying point. Um, in a lot of cases, we could have continued the story, but nonetheless, at least got to a breaking point. Um, similarly for this project, the goal is for it to be a self-contained story. So that doesn't mean you could, couldn't possibly expand it because like, there's always room to, to expand the story conceivably. Um, but, but trying to make it 
have an ending so that we know we've actually gotten, you know, through the meat of the story. Um, workshops in general are less successful if there's still a lot of room left where it's, you know, what, what was going to happen next. And the author can kind of explain away all manner of loose ends by saying, oh, yeah, that was going to be, you know, in the next uh, couple pages of the next scene or the next chapter or so on and so forth. So our objective here is to render a, a full story, assuming it's fiction or, you know, a full essay uh, if it's a uh, work of nonfiction, um, so just bearing that in mind. Um, but in general, I, I'll, I'll leave this, you know, for the draft part of my, my video lecture today, just on an open-ended question of thinking about what you like when you read literature, um, what, what appeals to you about it, what keeps you reading, and on the flip side, what immediately turns you off? Um, just as, as some questions, I think they're worth reflecting on for yourself before you start or before you finish, at least, um, the process of writing your own workshop draft, um, or even all the more so as you look ahead to your revised draft. Um, but okay, so, so moving on to the workshop itself, uh, I'll open this part of the lecture with a more open-ended question, which is, I want you to think back to times in your life when you've received feedback. Um, so not, so, not so, so much general you know, life advice, but sort of that you have done something and someone has given you feedback on it. So for example, um, you know, when you write an essay and, and your, your teacher gives you, you know, feedback along with your score, um, or, you know, or when you're working on the job and your supervisor um, you know, gives you feedback, maybe positive feedback to say, you know, you're doing a great job on this, you know, or it might be, you know, re really um, unuseful feedback where it's more them just sort of yelling at you or, you know, telling you did something wrong without giving an explanation as to why, or it seems like it's more... They they were in a bad mood and you actually did something wrong or, or so on and so forth. Um, so, so I'm just looking for just that general discussion of when feedback has been good and useful to you, whether it was constructive feedback, whether it was more complimentary feedback, um, but a response to something you did when, when it was useful to you, um, as well as times when it was not useful or even counterproductive to you. Um, the reason I introduced this question is because I think that a lot of times we know more about giving feedback and receiving feedback than we realize. Because we do something like a writing workshop, that's kind of what it's all about. Um, and we don't realize that we've actually done this a lot throughout our lives. We've gotten a lot of feedback. We've internalized it uh, for better or for worse, right? Sometimes that feedback is not as useful. So, so thinking back to, you know, feedback you've gotten and, and when it has or has not been useful. And, and I guess most importantly, why that's the case. Um... But so when we do this feedback um, of each other's stories, um, again, it's with an eye towards helping each other out, as well as helping the class out based on what we can recognize from the reading we've done. Um, so positive feedback can absolutely and absolutely should be a part of this process. Um, I would say even in the weakest um, submissions I, I've received from students in terms of writing assignments, um, I can't think of any time when there hasn't been something redeeming it. Even if it's just the kernel of an idea of what the student was writing about um, or an individual moment or a small word choice they made or something along those lines, there's always something positive we can find, um, even if the piece overall isn't that successful. Um, and on the flip side, even with really good work, really successful work, um, I, I, I don't know that I've ever seen a case where in a rough draft form there wasn't something critical we could say as well in terms of, you know, something constructive, something we could expand upon, something that um, is a little bit confusing to us now, um, something that it doesn't feel quite authentic to us. Um, any of that is sort of fair game, you know, for discussion there. Um, so in your feedback comments, um, the, the ideal thing to do is kind of to strike a balance between, you know, positive feedback, constructive criticism. Um, you, you don't have to do that for every single comment you leave. So, so some comments, if overwhelmingly you just really liked the piece, um, be specific about what you liked, but you can focus on positives in that vein. And on the flip side, if, if overarchingly, you know, you, you don't have a ton great, great to say about a story, um, or you notice all the, po all the feedback so far has been super positive, um, feel free to, you know, just, just give kind of more of your constructive constructive criticism in that case. Um, you can do both. You can do either or. Um, whatever feedback kind of makes sense to you to give. But the, the bar is at least one substantive comment per draft that you're reading. So, so you know, in most cases, that'll be two or three comments per class session coming out of this. Um, be respectful in this case, right? Um, be, be careful. Um, there's pros and cons to us being online to do this process. Um, in the live discussion, we do it in person. Um, there is always a risk of hurt feelings, right? Because someone, you know, really was invested in the thing they wrote. They thought it was a great story. And then they, they come in the class and someone is ripping it apart uh, by saying all the ways in which it isn't working so well. Um, the other side of that is sometimes people are really hesitant to say anything mean because it's like, well, this is my friend I'm seeing in class here, right? Or this is clearly a nice person um, who comp maybe they even complimented my workshop piece. I, I don't want to come down on theirs, right? Um, so, so, you know, 
carrying over when we go online, it can be easy to kind of dissociate from things because we, we don't necessarily know everyone in class. We don't see them face to face. Um, but still being you know, respectful of each other, being careful in how we word things. Um, you know, keeping in mind, you're going to be getting the same kind of feedback. How would you want to receive even the critical feedback and, you know, and being careful about that? Um, being specific, where you can, referencing specific page numbers, uh, specific quotes, specific uh, scenes that, that where things were happening. Um, some of your feedback might very well be more holistic in nature, where you're just kind of talking in general about what was successful in a story or an essay. Um, but but where you can, you know, dr drawing to specific examples of what's making something work so well uh, or what's not working so well in those cases. Um, you you can give some general you know corrections in terms of you know mechanics like grammar and punctuation and all that, but that shouldn't be the the focus of any of our comments. Um, if you notice, especially a repeated error where someone's just using the wrong word for something, uh, feel free to correct them on that. That can be useful feedback. Um, but our focus should be more on a content level of you know what what we like, what we don't like so much, and more specifically why and and what what the author might do. Um, some things you might consider, especially for the creative pieces and especially, especially for fiction. And I apologize for if I'm overemphasizing this element of uh, submissions, though I, I expect based on, on past experience and based on what, you know, informal discussions I've had with students uh, individually so far, that's where most students are going with this assignment. Um, some things you might consider are character setting, um, comprehension, because um, I, I think it's something where um, it's not usual for reading a piece, a, a rough draft, where at some point we get a little bit lost as to what's going on, what where this is, what time period we're in, if they flash back, so on and so forth. Um, th those are good things to call out because they're things that if you're the author, it can be hard to recognize for yourself. Um, as an outside reader, that's part of the value of this exercise is we, we get outside opinions, uh, outside views that, that are outside of our head. They can look at these things more objectively. Um, looking at the voice and tone, and specifically, is it consistent throughout the story? Are there points that really sound different? where the language becomes really academic uh, or technical um, or places where um, it seems as though the, the writer just wasn't paying very close attention. It becomes really informal for, you know, a few sentences, um, you know, pointing those sorts of things out. Um, but okay, those are the, the big points I want to go over for today's lecture. Um, so I, I shared a piece last time um, that, again, was a draft of a very short story, more of a flash piece um, that I wrote myself years back. Um, so the other thing, so the, the two things I'm going to leave for our discussion thread here are, one, a general um, space for, you know, discussion of the questions I brought up, as well as, you know, raising questions about the workshop draft, the workshop process overall. And the other thread is going to be is for us to actually do a practice run through of this workshop. Um, so um, like I'll do for the real workshop, for the most part, I probably won't comment a lot beyond just sort of, you know, liking to acknowledge I've seen it. Uh, and if I see comments I think are really important for the whole class to pay attention to, maybe providing a comment on those to you bring up, yes, this is an excellent point. Um, or if I think that something is really kind of off the mark, like either in the tone that, that you're delivering your feedback in, um, or, or I think it's just sort of, you know, misguided advice I wouldn't want for the class to internalize, um, I might comment on those pieces. Um, but for the most part, um, it's kind of a no news is good news situation. I'm asking you to do this practice workshop just to get your practice in. And again, so I can kind of correct you if things are really off course or point out really exceptional things that I hope we do a lot of uh, in the workshop of, of each other's pieces as this process goes on. Um, the very last thing I want to say before I cut off the video is just looking ahead to the revised draft. Um, so for everyone, um, the revised draft, let, let me actually look at the syllabus here before I give um, the wrong date. I believe it's, well, let, let me actually look because I, I don't want to plant the, the seed of the wrong date in anyone's uh, mind and then have us follow up on that. Um, okay, I was right. So, so it's um, December 7th. Uh, I believe that's the, the Monday of finals week. Um, that is the due date for revised drafts. Um, you can turn them in sooner if you want, for sure. So those of you who are going really early in this workshop process, one of the real advantages you have is um, that you have over a month to be able to you know, process feedback from me as well as from your, your classmates, you know, do some really thoughtful revisions. And I actually expect that's probably more than enough time for, for most of you. So if you want to go ahead and turn this in you know, in mid to late November and essentially be done with the major assignments for this class, that is totally fair game. In fact, I encourage you to do that. Um, if you want to take your time and you know really take that full you know month plus, but be my guest. You're also welcome to do that. Um, those of you who are going later in this process, so for example, our last workshop submission date um, is uh, November 30th, and then we have um, your our last workshop discussion um, right after that. 
Um, so, so for those folks who are, who are going, I th those dates might not be exactly right, but I think you, you, you'll get the point regardless. If you're going late in the process, you may only have a, you know, a week or two basically um, to be able to process feedback from your peers. Um, so, so in that case, there's a little bit more pressure on you to have a little bit more polished workshop draft. Um, not that I'm going to grade it harder, but more so just because you know you're not going to have a whole month to revise this thing. You have more like, like a week or two. Um, you want to kind of you know make sure you've got a lot of that work done ahead of time. You've got it as good as you can get it for your workshop draft. Um, and then it's, you know, hopefully, you know, less significant changes you'll have to make for your revised draft. Um, but we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more in, in the late stages of class. Uh, but I hope just, you know, kind of preliminarily that that, that makes sense for folks. Uh, but okay, th thanks for watching this video. I'll look forward to the discussion as always. And again, it'll probably be a little while before you see another video lecture from me. Um, but I really look forward to the actual workshop discussion that we'll start to get into on Monday.